A lifetime of photography adds up to a few key seconds. These are the magical fractions of time which professional photographers have found after decades behind the lens. I guess it wasn't really until I left school and went traveling, going through Brazil and uh, Southeast Asia and Europe, and it was really there that photography became incredibly important to me. I'd met a couple of photographers on the road, and when they told me about their lifestyle and where they got to go and, and that they actually got paid, I was like, yep, that's for me. I find myself in situations where it can be incredibly dangerous in, in wars and, and um, you know, social conflicts. So things happen very quickly. There's no time to prepare. It really is, you hear something, you get in a car, and you drive to the front line and you get in there and you get the photographs and you get out and you know, that's, that's it. It's crazy. I think I keep going back because I'm drawn to the people, I'm drawn to the cultures and just having that opportunity to be a nomad and get to see so much of uh, you know, the world around us and it's fraught with risks and you know, it makes me feel alive. This photograph was taken in 2001 inside a house in a place called El Ara village near Hebron in the West Bank in Israel. It's a picture of grieving women who were standing above the body of a young Palestinian boy that was, was killed the night before, allegedly by Israeli security forces. I'm jammed in that room. That room is packed and I can't move very much. And, the women are literally on top of me and I can feel their, their, you know, their sweat and their tears are literally falling on my camera. I mean, that's how close I am. I'm right in there with them and you, you, know, you become a part of the scene. In this photograph, there is uh, an incredible amount of emotion. It says a lot about the situation of that particular time and place. I mean, here we are in Israel, 2001. It's the height of the second intifada. Um, this, this boy was killed, you know, fighting for his rights to, to, uh, to nationhood. This is not just a normal picture. This is a picture that has a lot of movement. There's a body on the floor and there are screaming and wailing women. And, you know, I'm trying to make sense of the grief that's in front of me, I'm using that movement to capture an emotion about what's going on. I could have shown the body on the floor, but I don't want to give everything away. But what I do want to do is to come up with an image that is, is honest and that, that captures that human condition and, and emotional moment that that's what was happening at that particular place in time. There's a fine line as well because I'm dealing with uh, something very personal that I'm invading someone's personal space. I'm going right in there and I'm, you know, my number one goal is to, to get this photograph and to, to get something that I feel is going to give some sort of an, an honest depiction about what's going on. I think, you know, it has, has a lot to do with cutting myself off emotionally and stick to being um, a photographer and concentrating on capturing those moments. Uh, if I was to you know, allow my emotions to get the better of me, then it would be very difficult for me to, to operate. Um, not that that doesn't affect me. I mean, I'm you know, very affected by what I see, uh, particularly you know, the aftermath and, and, and what I see when I come home and, when I have to edit my pictures, choosing, you know, essentially what are the most powerful images are often the ones that are the most heartbreaking uh, and emotional. Um, that, that's often difficult. In this situation where 
uh, someone has been murdered for political reasons, especially in a place like Palestine, um, you know, they're willing to show the press. It all comes back to their cause. You know, they, they know the power of what a photograph can have and where that photograph might be published around the world. If someone had not wanted me to be there, I would, I would drop the camera and, and, and leave. I mean, I'm not going to taunt a situation that is very volatile and potentially very dangerous if, uh, if you, you know, say or, um, or do the wrong thing. If I think of, you know, some of the, the most amazing photographs of our time, they um, have this incredible um, emotion to them and then they, it actually makes you feel something, you know, it rips your heart out. This is the power that a photograph can have and that's the power of photography that I aspire to. This photograph was was born out of a quarter of a second and, and that was the moment. 